Star Citizen has been targeted in some odd ways from its critics and trolls, with some people complaining to be backers or employees that aren't. There's fake news, faked refund claims for ships, stories without any credible sources, faked glass door reviews, faked leaked newsletters, faked concept sales, faked emails from employees and customer service, to name only some. John Pritchett, senior physics programmer, recently left CIG, as I've previously reported on, and a review on Glassdoor, a website where employees and former employees anonymously review companies and their management, appeared from someone who looked like it was John, and there was some reasonable criticism about parts of the project which surprised me. Today I'm summarising this fake news, as John actually suggested I do. So what did the review say? Well, it was from former employee, senior physics programmer in Los Angeles, dated the 1st of July, which pretty much suggests with a very high probability that it was had to be John Pritchett, if anyone. So pros, I really enjoyed my initial time working at CIG slash Foundry 42. I had a lot of freedom and essentially unlimited scope to make the best product I could. Later that changed, but the first couple of years working on the physics model and pushing CryEngine Lumbyard to the limits were absolutely amazing. I got all of my varied and fairly niche skills, ranging from C++ to 3D math and advanced physics, which is extremely rare in my industry. I had a great team working with me, and those guys went above and beyond for both the business and me personally, doing more than I've ever seen developers in any company do. The community were also super supportive, and I loved interacting with them and updating them in the community forums on a near daily basis. Cons. After the initial enthusiasm and glow of the first three years, things began to take a sour turn. The model we had created was amazing. It worked better than we had been expecting. Many colleagues internally and the wider community complemented our team's work. However, later we were forced to change architecture partway through the development, which in game design is never a good thing, but we were managing it well. Sadly, it then turned out that other aspects of the game connected to what we had been developing already for the initial three years were essentially technically unfeasible given the current and near future levels of technology, basically making my role and my entire team redundant. Even worse, this completely ruined the work that we'd been doing up to that point, which many people in the community openly commented on as the quality of the product noticeably dropped, and this led my team to feel very frustrated. Advice to management. The scope of the project needs to be massively reined in, and realistic expectations of what will actually be delivered in the next decade or two need to be communicated honestly and clearly to the community supporting the business. There's no point wasting huge amounts of money, time, resources, and community goodwill, hiring top-end specialists, and starting projects when you don't even know what you want the finished product to look like, or if it's even technically feasible. Micromanagement is also a massive issue, having to have almost every other line of code personally signed off, not just by your line manager and local QA teams, but by the directors themselves is frankly ridiculous, and not a development methodology that I've ever encountered in this industry previously. I'm not sure it can ever be effective. That said, please keep up the passion and the dream alive. It really is an amazing environment, and hopefully in a decade or so, the original dream can finally be realised. I definitely recommend if you get the opportunity to intern or work at CIG earlier in your career, just to be exposed to the bleeding edge and to work with people who genuinely do love their product, unlike a lot of the other more cynical companies in this industry. So that's the, that's the review. What's the issue with this? People are allowed to post reviews and are allowed to be critical. Maybe he's being overly critical. Well, the issue with this is that it's a fake review and John had to post on Facebook to try and get the word out that it was fake. The statement that John put in was, it recently came to my attention that someone impersonating me has posted a fake review on Glassdoor about my time on Star Citizen. I did not write this review. I flagged it with the site, but felt that I should make a post to get out the word in case anyone saw it and thought it was legit. Very little from the review reflects my personal experience, but I particularly disagreed with some of the characterization that I left because my systems, and really that I myself, had become obsolete as the game has evolved. This is definitely not the case. Any game in alpha is always evolving, and any system as critical as the flight model is therefore also evolving. Had I remained with CIG, it would have continued to evolve, and it will certainly evolve without me. Anyway, for my friends who would follow Star Citizen, if you see any reference to this post, please set the record straight for me. Thanks. He did report it to CIG and Glassdoor as well, and 
I don't normally do videos like this, nor will it become a regular thing on my channel unless, you know, something is newsworthy or it's definitely a big part of the project or it's very dramatic or whatever. And I, I'm going to cover the news on the project and topics around Star Citizen that are appropriate to cover. Nothing that's randomly sensationalist like, is the project a scam? Or, oh, have they spent money on Star Citizen on a coffee machine? I'm not going to do stuff like that. Uh, I really like John and I've talked to him at length about his time at CIG and the IFCS model. He clearly loves the fans and the project that he made his IFCS for. Uh, and it is a pretty cool um, document and lots of stuff that he's done has been pretty awesome. The way he did connect with fans has been great. So thank you very much, John Pritchett. You are a legend and it is a shame to see you leave the project. I just find it odd that people enjoy this level of deceit and twisting to, I assume, a narrative they want to push and go to lengths to fake these things, or just to troll. To celebrate the release of 3.2, myself and a multitude of other Star Citizen streamers are fundraising for Special Effect, with a series of streams over the week until the 7th of July. There will be ship giveaways across the various streams too. Go to justgiving.com slash fundraising slash star dash citizen dash special effect to find out more and get involved. I'm also giving away a Saber Raven to a random commenter on one of my videos during that time too. Make sure you're subscribed to my YouTube channel and comment on any of my videos made this week to be in for a chance of winning, including this one. Uh, also, Shadow Stuffs. Be sure to check out Shadow. It's a cloud-based alternative to getting or upgrading your gaming PC. It allows you to leverage the power of a, a GeForce 1080 at the moment and a powerful Windows 10 PC on almost any device so long as your internet connection is good enough. It works with Star Citizen Alpha 3.2 and with 3.3 coming in September with object container streaming, it's only going to get better. Shadow is available in France, Germany, United States, United Kingdom, Belgium, Luxembourg and Switzerland. If you do try it out, be sure to use the code BOARDGAMER to get a discount. The links to more info in the description below. A special thank you to my Patreons and all the people that watch my videos and all that sort of jazz. You guys are awesome. Um, if you want to support the channel further, there's links below as well for Patreon donations and all that sort of jazz as well. You guys are amazing. You take care and I'll see you in the verse.